Ephesians chapter number 2, a whole lot of preaching in this chapter. Um, we'll begin reading verse number 1. The Bible says, And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince and the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus." that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in in them. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the good singing. Thank you for being a good God. Thank you for Ephesians chapter number 2. Thank you, Lord, that when we were lost, you loved us. And God, thank you for making a way where we didn't have to stay lost, where we could come to the saving knowledge of Christ. Now, Lord, I pray that for the next few minutes, you'd put a hedge about us. You'd speak to our hearts. I realize your people are uh, many of them are tired in body. They've worked hard today, this week. And God, I pray you'd refresh them. I pray that, Lord, you'd energize them. I pray you'd illuminate our minds to truth. You'd edify the body of Christ. I certainly pray to a crowd this size, if somebody's unsaved, lost without Jesus, that today would be the day of their salvation. Father, I pray you'd use this unworthy vessel now and I pray you'd speak to the saints of God, and I pray that Jesus would be glorified and magnified through it all. Bless now, we'll bless you for it. In Jesus' wonderful name we ask it all. Amen and amen. I want to draw your attention to several things from this text. I want you to notice, first of all, those of us that are saved, that are blood-washed, uh, that have been born again, we see in this text uh, our past condition. If you look again in verse number 1, it says, And you hath he quickened, uh, that word quickened means made alive, uh, who were dead in trespasses and sins. Uh, can I say there's a lot of people walking around, breathing God's air, uh, uh, enjoying God's creation, uh, but they're dead. Uh, they're dead to God. Uh, they're in enmity with God. Uh, they've never been made spiritually alive. They've never been quickened and they're dead. You and I were that way. We were dead in our sins, just living life, groping through the darkness, looking for having a good time or whatever we was doing. But thanks be unto God, the day that he convicted us of our sins and we realized we were lost and we realized that we needed to be saved. And when we called on the Lord, hey, aren't you glad that he quickened us? He made us alive. Hey, I'm dead to sin now because he has made me alive uh, and I bless his holy name I'm glad it's a past condition not a present condition I'm glad when he saved me he saved me from my past sins my present sins and my future sins uh, we see our past condition but notice our predisposed course look in verse number 2 talking about our past life uh, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world according to the prince and power of the air that's the devil that's his domain he's the prince and power of the air the spirit uh, that now worketh in the children of disobedience can I say uh, 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 don't look down on lost people they're just lost they're just living uh, the way that their flesh and the devil and the world dictates to them to live Hmm? As a matter of fact, when we was lost, uh, we walked as society dictated, uh, we walked as Satan directed, uh, and we walked as our self desired. Uh, we just love sinning and we sin. Hmm? Can I say a lot of people live like they live because they don't know any better? 
they're just sinful, huh? Does it mean uh, 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 they're worthless? Uh, uh, matter of fact, God thinks they're worth so much he gets sent his only begotten son to die for them. Uh, it just means they're lost. Uh, 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 and you and I are here uh, uh, to share the gospel with them, to be a light unto them, to let them know there's a better way, and his name is Jesus. Uh, we see our predisposed course. We just lived as sinners. Aren't you glad uh, when Jesus moved in, you've been saved by the good grace of God? We see our past condition. We see the predisposed course. But notice uh, the permissive conduct in verse number 3. Among, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past uh, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh uh, and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Uh, uh, can I say, we just had a permissive conduct. We just lived loose. We lived fleshly. We lived worldly. We sought after fleshly lust. Uh, that's what we did. Uh, 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 because, again, we didn't know any better. Uh, but notice the paramount conversion. Look at verse number 4. But God, Amen. he didn't throw us away. He didn't say we were worthless. He didn't say we were useless. He didn't say that we were hopeless. Uh, but God, uh, who is rich uh, in mercy. Uh, mercy means he held back what we deserved. Uh, grace means we got what we didn't deserve. Uh, Mercy means he held back what we did deserve. Uh, you know what we all deserved? Hell. Right, right. It's what we deserve. Uh, we ought to be in hell tonight. Uh, 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 but God, who's rich in mercy, said they deserve hell. Uh, but I've got something else in mind. What a blessing. Uh, but God, who's rich in mercy, uh, for his great love wherewith he loved us, uh, even when we were dead in sins, uh, hath quickened us together with Christ by grace uh, you're saved. Uh, what a paramount uh, conversion. Uh, we deserved hell. We was on our way to hell. Uh, but God, uh, even when we were dead in our sins, he loved us. Uh, we love him because he first loved us. Uh, aren't you glad he's loved us with an everlasting love? Uh, hey, in the midst of our depravity, in the midst of our sin, in the midst of our wickedness uh, when no one else saw anything in us. Uh, uh, the great God of glory uh, looked down in mercy and in grace and in love uh, and he loved us despite us. Uh, and he said, uh, I'll change your life if you'll believe on me. And aren't you glad uh, because of his mercy and because of his grace we've been quickened made a child of God born again huh? what a blessing uh, then we see our positional citizenship look at verse number 6 and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus uh, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace uh, and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus it's hard for our little pea brains to fathom uh, but even though we're here tonight at 7183 Old Pleasant Valley Way, Florence, Kentucky, because I've been made alive in Christ Jesus, uh, because I've been born again, I'm actually seated in heavenly places in Christ. Even though I'm physically here positionally, I'm already in heaven. You know the crowd that thinks they can lose their salvation, you know what their big problem is? They don't understand it's not my salvation. It's his salvation. And when he saved me, uh, he not only forgave me, but he engraved me in the palm of his hand. He sealed me with the Holy Spirit of promise. Uh, he promised to never leave me nor forsake me. Uh, and he also seated me in heavenly places. Uh, my name's recorded there. My citizenship is there. Uh, the only thing keeping me from there is this body of clay. Huh? What a blessing to have that positional citizenship. Uh, we've been raised uh, together in Christ. Why did God save us? He answers that in verse number 7. Do you ever wonder why God loved you? Why God saved you? It's right there in verse 7. That in the ages to come, 
he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Amen. Can I say for all of eternity, when we're robed in that royal apparel, uh, sitting around the throne of God, uh, and all the angelic beings keep saying, well, who are they and why are they here? Uh, God will say, uh, uh, that's the uh, uh, trophies of my grace. Uh, that's what my mercy can do. Uh, that's what I am able to do. Uh, I can take the worthless and make them uh, uh, the most valuable in Christ Jesus. Huh? What a blessing. Uh, I don't know about you. Every now and then we have some little things that happen in our lives and we can't wait to show them off. They say, what do you show off, Brother Doug? That little grandbaby right there is looking at me. Hi, baby. How you doing? Uh, but can you believe God who paints every sunset, God who makes every rainbow, God who makes every beautiful flower, uh, God who makes every beautiful mountain scene, uh, God who does all those things says, no, that's not what I'm going to show off. Uh, I'm going to show off a bunch of sinners uh, that deserve to go to hell, uh, but look what I can do in them when I save them. Mm -hmm. What a blessing. Mm -hmm. Then notice, if you will, the perfect conferring. Verse number 8 says, For by grace are you saved through faith. Say, so how do you get saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Amen. See, in order to get saved, you've got to realize you're lost. When you realize you're lost, just believe on the Lord. Ask Him to save you. He'll save you by His grace. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. You can't get saved under your own accord. Huh? Not of works. There's not enough works to get you saved. Hmm? Getting baptized won't save you. Being a church member won't save you. Giving a lot of money to the church won't save you. Uh, uh, doing any kind of works. Uh, I, I feel sorry when I see these uh, uh, so-called churches. Uh, many of them are cults. Uh, and they're in the community handing out water on a hot day. Uh, and they're doing works. Uh, and I think, man, they don't get it. Works won't save them. I'm glad they're doing good for people. Uh, but works won't save you. Only Jesus can save you. All them commercials with all them little children. It's got all them diseases and people give to those charities. That's a good thing to give to those charities. But that won't save you. Right. Only Jesus will save you. Why? Not of works, lest any man should boast. You see, if we could work our way into heaven, then what Jesus did on the cross is of none effect. Right. Oh, good. Mm -mm. If we could work our way in heaven, we'd be like Lucifer in eternity past. We'd go up and tell him he needs to get off my throne. Mm. But you see, we can't work our way to heaven. But Jesus will take you to heaven if you believe on the Lord. And then we see the profound call. And I'm not going to spend much time on verse number 10 because Brother Adrian just taught on it a few weeks ago. But for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, uh, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Can I say what was ordained before the foundation of the world is everybody that would get saved would be created a good workmanship or creation uh, towards workmanship in Christ Jesus. I don't work to get saved. I work because I am saved. Can I say this? Uh, everybody's called to be saved. You didn't know you was lost till God showed you you was lost. And it was God who began to convict you. And it was God who called you to a place of salvation. Hmm? Can I say everybody's called to serve? There's some specific calls. God will call a man to preach. Yes, I said a man. Uh, God will call a man into evangelism, into the pastorship, to be a missionary. There's some specific calls. But there is a general call to every believer. We are to do as we sang tonight. We are to work till Jesus comes. We all have a call of service. And then one of these days we're going to get a call to go home. Hallelujah. Huh? We see the profound call. I'm interested in verse number 4. And that wonderful phrase, but God. 624, time, or 624 verses and your King James Bible contains the words, but and God. 
44 verses contain the exact phrase, but God. There are 19 in the Old Testament and there's 25 in the New Testament. But God is a very important thing. That conjunction but means whatever was said before, it's about to change. And everything that was said in verses 1 to 3 was talking about what rascals we were how wicked we were, how sorry we were, what course we were headed. Uh, we were headed uh, to that broad way that leaded to destruction. But God stepped in and everything changed. And for a few minutes, I want to preach on this tonight. I want to preach on who but God. Uh, who but God could do certain things. Uh, it amazes me we're having another... Is, does, is it me or does it seem like we're having an election every all the time? I'm getting so tired of all the propaganda. It amazes me how everybody running for office says they're going to go change everything in Washington. And everybody that's been in Washington uh, uh, say they, they have been doing the changing, but nobody else around them is changing, so they got to stay there. Uh, and all it seems like is an endless cycle of lies. Mm -mm. Uh, but can I say Washington can't do anything the governor's mansion and the state government can't do anything you know why they can't do anything because they've, they've accepted too many bribes Amen. too many hands in their pockets huh it amazes me how many of them claim to be born-again believers, but when they get in office, they don't act like it. Amen. Uh, I'm just setting the tone here. There are a lot of people that claim they can do things. It's amazing. Doctors seem like they have all the answers. Here's what I want to know. How come when they're wrong, you don't get your money back? Amen. you got to pay them regardless. Huh? And how come you make an appointment with them and then they're running an hour late and they don't pay you for your time, but you've got to pay them for theirs? Mm -mm. I'm meddling, I know. Doctors can't change anything. Politicians can't change anything. huh? Let me help you something. Preachers can't change anything. Uh, who but God? Mm -mm. How come we look to the politicians, we look to the doctors, we even look to the preachers, we look to everybody but to God? Yeah. God's the only one to make a difference. Amen. Can I say, first of all, who but God could create the heavens and the earth? Right. All scientists are trying to explain it away or they're trying to recreate things and everybody's got an opinion on it, but who but God? could create the heavens and the earth. Uh, the Bible says in Genesis 2 and 4, uh, these are the generations of the heavens uh, and of the earth uh, when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Uh, Isaiah 45 and 18, uh, For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, uh, God himself formed the earth uh, and made it. Uh, he hath established it. Uh, he hath created it not in vain. Uh, he formed it to be inhabited. Uh, I am am the Lord, uh, and there is none else. Uh, Hebrews 11 3 uh, uh, says through faith we understand uh, that the worlds were framed by the word of God, uh, so that things which are seen uh, were not made of things which do appear. Amen. You know why science can't always figure it out? Because God didn't use science. God just spoke and it happened. You say, you really believe that preacher? Yep. Why do you believe that? Because that's what the Bible says. Uh, I'll never forget my pastor, Brother Pittman, was picking on one of his little granddaughters uh, one time, and he, he made up some big thing. He said, uh, 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 and you really believe that happened? She says, well, does it say it in the Bible? <laughs> he said, well, no. She said, well, I don't believe it then. That's pretty smart. Uh, but who but God could create everything? Amen. Do you ever think about the miracle of just the human anatomy? That somehow in our brain you have an impulse and you tell your fingers to move and they move? Huh? 
I mean, there's just the complexity of how everything works and how everything goes together and all that. Uh, uh, what an amazing thing. Uh, and how God uh, in his greatness uh, made us all different. We all have different fingerprints. Uh, uh, we all have different traits. Uh, isn't it amazing how God does things, huh? Who but God could create the heavens and the earth? Can I say this? Who, who but God could cons conserve everything, maintain everything? Huh? This world's spinning out of course, but you know who's keeping her where she's at? God. Uh, Colossians 1.17 says, And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. God keeps gravity in, in place and keeps everything where it's supposed to be. I mean, what a God, huh? Amen. I'm saying, who but God? Uh, who but God could con uh, constitute a way? Did you ever wonder about mm, how God had a plan for how men could be saved before he made man? Oh, yeah. Amen. He had it all figured out from the beginning. Because he's the ending and the beginning, the Alpha and the Omega. Uh, nothing's ever occurred to God. Before God made man, God knew man would fail him, but God already had a plan in place because uh, God had the Lord Jesus as the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Uh, he had a plan. Hmm? What a blessing. Uh, now let me help you something. I'm going to read some verses. And when I read these verses, people get nervous. Uh, listen, I believe God's sovereign. I believe God is self-sufficient. He don't need anything or anybody. He's God. And can I say, uh, nothing ever uh, just happened on God. God's known uh, uh, everything from the beginning. And by the way, he's not some old man uh, in a rocking chair that's feeble trying to figure it all out. Uh, he knows tonight. Uh, but that doesn't mean he programmed everything. He's got a plan, but he didn't program everything. Say, so what do you mean, preacher? The Bible says in Romans 8 9, For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Now, can I say something? That word predestinate scares people. The Bible said God foreknew. I believe in the foreknowledge of God. By the way, God knew if you would trust in him. And God knew uh, if you'd be in heaven. Uh, and even John the Revelator's already seen the bride in heaven. So uh, God knew all that. Uh, and God did predestinate something. Uh, he did not predestinate for men to die and go to hell uh, and for men to die and go to heaven. Uh, but he did predestinate that everybody that would believe on the Lord Jesus Christ would be conformed uh, to his image. Uh, and we're going to get a body fashioned like the Son of God. Uh, and he said some more about predestination. Ephesians 1, 5, Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself uh, according to the good pleasure of his will. He didn't predestinate uh, Lucas to be saved uh, and Xander to be lost. Uh, but what he did predestinate uh, was the adoption of sonship, uh, that everybody get born again would be adopted into the family of God. Uh, isn't it amazing? Uh, there are only three ways to get into a family. You're born into a family, you're married into a family, or you're adopted into a family. And in Christ Jesus, we got all three. You must be born again. Uh, uh, we receive the adoption of sonship, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Uh, and one day, at the marriage supper of the Lamb, we'll be married into the family. Huh? Amen. You say, why is there three? I don't know. It might have something to do with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. All I know uh, is God works in threes a lot. Huh? And all I can say, one lock's good, two locks is great, three locks are superior, and there's three ways huh, that I ain't getting out of the family. Huh? What a blessing, huh? The Bible says in Ephesians 1.11, in whom also we've obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Again, I'm not predestinated to be saved, but it, once I got saved, I was, uh, uh, it was predestinated I'd have an inheritance. Hmm? And I've been made a joint heir to the throne of Christ. What I'm trying to say is who but God could constitute a way of salvation that Jesus my dear friends, would become our Savior. The way that God constituted is a way of blood. 
from the fall of man when God had to shed blood, when he uh, uh, slew those animals to clothe the nakedness of Adam and Eve, uh, he set forth a precedence. Uh, and the Bible says without, a sh without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. Uh, it's always been a blood way. Uh, and since Exodus chapter 12, uh, it's always been uh, the blood of the Lamb uh, over the doorpost uh, uh, would uh, cause us uh, uh, to find safety. Uh, hey, what a blessing. When he sees the blood, he'll pass over you uh, and the night you got saved uh, Jesus took your black vile sin uh, washed them in his blood uh, made you white as snow uh, and the blood's been placed over the door of your heart uh, what a blessing it's been a blood way uh, those who get saved got to be saved by the blood of the lamb can I say it's always been a way of his beloved son John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. You know, say, you'll not get there going through Mary. You'll not get there going through the Pope. You'll not get there going through the Dalai Lama. You'll not get there going through Muhammad. Uh, you'll not get there going through Buddha. Uh, you'll not get there going through the preacher. Uh, you only get there going through Jesus. He's the way. Uh, can I say, God made this way uh, a way of being born again. Jesus told one of the most religious men of his day, Nicodemus, you must be born again. Uh, can I say it's a born again way? Can I say this? It's also a way of the book. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 1 21, for after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. So then faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. You didn't know you was lost till somebody shared the scriptures with you, till somebody told you what the Bible said. Uh, and my dear friends, it's a book way that leads us. Uh, we're begotten again by an incorruptible seed, the word of God. And what a blessing, huh? And I say only God, who but God could constitute a way. You know, if man made the way, it'd be just like politics, whoever's got the most money. Uh well, a bunch of paupers like us have no chance. But aren't you glad Jesus, no respecter of persons, he said, whosoever will, let him come drink the water of life freely. Can I say, who but God could conquer? Hmm? Can I say, he conquered sin's chains. I was bound by sin. Jesus broke the chains, huh? He conquered the sting of death. Oh, death, where's thy sting? Huh? What a blessing. The sting of death's been removed for the child of God. And I say this, he conquered uh, the seas of the grave. Oh, grave, where's thy victory? Uh, I'm glad death in the grave has no power over the child of God uh, to be absent from this body, to be present with the Lord. Uh, who but God could conquer those things for you and I? Amen. Who but God could cleanse? Hmm. First John 1, 7, but if we walk in the light as he's in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanses us from all sin. Uh, I don't know about you, but I'm sick and tired of preachers thinking that there are certain sins God don't forgive. That Bible said the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. Mm -hmm. Let me help you something. We like to categorize sin, but God can't accept any of it. You know your little white lies just as heinous in the sight of God as any other sin? Because He can't accept any of it because He's holy. Say, what makes us have fellowship with God? The blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, I bless the Lord. Who but God could cleanse? You remember when Jesus forgave that man of his sins? And the Pharisees got all upset. They said, who can forgive sins but God? Yep. <laughs> who but God? Yeah. Huh? Who but God can cleanse? Can I say this? Who but God can change? Jeremiah chapter 13 verse 23 says, Can the Ethiopian change his skin or the leopard his spots that they may, that ye may, that ye also, uh, that then may ye also do good uh, that are accustomed to do evil? Uh, 2 Corinthians 5 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Uh, old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Uh, you couldn't change your spots. Uh, you couldn't change your habits. Uh, you couldn't change your direction. Uh, you was a sinner. Uh, you sinned by prayer practice, you sin by nature, you sin by enjoyment, uh, uh, but I'm here to tell you when you met Jesus uh, he made a new creature out of you, uh, hey the old things passed away, he's the one that can change you uh, I 
I've seen many of folks that used to be drunks, Miss Kay included. <laughs> then they met Jesus, started drinking from a different well. Oh, yeah. uh, and Brother Phil's testimony tell you how foul mouth used to be. You ain't around him two minutes and he's praising the Lord with that mouth that used to be foul, huh? Say, who did that? Jesus, who but God can change, huh? Brother Ron will tell you he didn't know nothing about church, didn't know nothing about God, just lived a, a sinful life, was headed the wrong direction, but God stepped in and he changed his life. And I can tell that story about each and every one of you over and over again that's been saved by the good grace of God. Who changed us? Some preacher? No. Jesus is the only one that can change us. Thought about this. Who but God could cloak? Hmm? We say, what are you talking about, preacher? Do you understand that being in God, in the Lord Jesus Christ, comes with great privileges? Can I say that he cloaks us by shielding us? When we get to heaven, we'll see how many things was coming our way, but the Lord stepped in and shielded us from them. He not only shields us, He safeguards us. There's been a lot of times the devil had you in his sights, but the Lord safeguarded you, and the arrow missed. <laughs> Can I say this? He also sustains us. What a blessing to know the Lord is my keeper. What a blessing to know that regardless of what's going on, David said he'd never seen the righteous forsaken nor seed begging bread, and I, can I say I've never seen the righteous forsaken or seed begging bread either. You say, preacher, I know somebody saved that had a hard time, couldn't pay their bills. I didn't say saved, I said righteous. There are some biblical principles that if you enact and you put them in your life, uh, God, it's impossible for him to lie. My dear friends, if you put God first, trust me, you'll never be without. Amen. You may not live high in the hog, but you'll, know, you'll have enough hog. Hmm? Uh, he said, prove me now. If I'll not open the windows of heaven, pour out a blessing that you cannot contain. How about that verse, press down, shake, and bubble over when men give in your bosom? Hey, I'm telling you, there's principles in the Bible. If you live by and you live righteously, you'll never be begging bread either. Huh? I know the economy's gotten worse. I don't like paying that much for bread and gas and all that any more than you, but aren't you glad we got enough pocket change to pay for it? Sure. Huh? Why? Because God is faithful. Amen. Who but God could cloak? I'm glad I'm not dependent on Joe Biden. Oh, yeah. huh? Lord have mercy, he don't even change his own diapers. I mean, that guy's a mess. Huh? Do you look at him? I look at him and I think of that thing when they used to make them funny things you could put on your answer machine. I look at him and I think, nobody's home. Nobody's home. Huh? Y'all know that guy that's got the puppets, Jeff Dunham? You ever see Walter? Look at Walter's face and look at Joe Biden's face. Same guy. They're both dummies. Somebody's controlling them, I'm telling you. Uh, I'm glad I'm not trusted in him or anybody else other than Jesus. Can I say this? Who but God could comfort us in our storms? Miss Crystal testified about the peace of God. Who but God? When the doctor gives you bad news, when tragedy hits your home, when something goes awry, you lose your job, who but God can comfort you in the midst of your storms? Sure. Nobody. Well, I'm glad he gives us companions and they meet well. How many of you have ever heard this? If you need anything, call me. Listen, I'm never going to call you. I appreciate the sentiment, but I'm never going to call you. Hmm? But isn't it a blessing to know that I don't even need to, need to call the Lord. He knows when I have need. And long before I ever even talk to him about it, he's already got the answer on the way. Huh? Uh, who but God could comfort? And I thought about this lastly. Who but God could crown? 
great apostle Paul before he crossed over in 2 Timothy 4, 8, said, Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love is appearing. Who but God could crown us? Now think about that. Let me go talk to the colonel. He had a pretty good day today. Now Ephesians tells us we were rascals, but God saved us. Yes, sir. Wouldn't that be enough? But then he's gone to prepare a place for us. They said it hadn't even entered in our hearts what God had prepared. Wouldn't that be enough? But even that, he said, no, it's enough. He said, I'm going to put a crown on your head too. Huh? Who but God would do that? I mean, man would say, I let you in, that's good enough. No, not God. Uh, getting saved's just the beginning. Uh, they, then we got the earnest of the Spirit. That means there's a whole lot more to come. Uh, what a blessing to know uh, that God, uh, who but God, could crown us uh, and do those things. He did all the work, but yet He's going to let us share in it. And I know we're going to lay them crowns at His feet. Well, I got a feeling somewhere along the line he's going to put them back on our heads. You say, how can you say that, preacher? Well, when John got the vision over there, he got down to worship, and the angel said, don't worship me. Uh, the angel of the Lord said, don't worship me. I'm your fellow servant. He said, worship the Lamb. Why did he say that? Because in heaven we all look like the Lamb. And if the Lamb's the only one wearing a crown, John would have known that. Yeah. Figured out, huh? I'm just saying, who but God? could do all those things I said all that tonight to say this if you're not careful you'll get under a juniper tree you'll get into mully grubs you'll get to looking at all the bad or you'll get to looking down and you'll forget the God who's rich in mercy and what he's done what he's doing and what he's going to do in your life. We ought to embrace Hebrews chapter number 12. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. You know what will help you when you're looking down? Look up. Especially when you see all these things come to pass. He said, look up because your redemption draweth nigh. Uh, instead of feeling sorry for ourselves we ought to feel grateful towards God because it could be a whole lot worse now I know what he does that sorry no good devil get on your shoulder and tell you how worthless you are and how sorry you are and how bad things are and everything you remember the story of the big bad wolf he huffs and he puffs that's all the devil is a big blowhard the Bible said, be sober, be vigilant for your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion. Miss Jackie, he didn't say as a biting lion. He just roars real loud. And the more you listen to him, the louder he gets. So how do you compact that? Draw nigh to God. He'll draw nigh to you. Resist the devil, he'll flee from you. Well, how can you resist him? I find Ephesians chapter 2 is a good place to start. Just get in there about verse number 4 and all of a sudden you'll find out that those roars are distant and the mercy of God is still as fresh as the day he saved you my dear friends how long has it been you've been grateful for his mercy how long has it been that you just were enamored with God it seems like when Hollywood came up with all the special effects, people weren't impressed with God anymore. We've seen so many things uh, uh, made up on TV that looks real. All of a sudden, God just becomes almost like make-believe. We ought to still be awestruck at the thought of Almighty God cares about us. You ever... I'm trying to close. I just can't quit. I'm enjoying myself. Did you ever look at pictures or movies of outer space? Look at the stars and the galaxies. And they say we're in the Milky Way. And you look at all the stars and all the places. And then we got 
And when I was a kid, nine planets. Now we got eight planets. I don't know what happened to one planet. Poor Pluto. I don't know what happened to him. Uh, I guess the I guess the the liberals done away with him, like some of the statues they're doing away with. But anyway, do you ever look at all of that vastness? And they talk about there are galaxies beyond galaxies beyond galaxies and suns and planets and all this stuff out there. And you think about all that, Brother Bob. And God's thrones in the sides of the north, that means everything's beneath him. He made all that out there and he flung them stars out there and called them all by name. But to think about all those celestial beings out there and there's one little speck in the midst of all that called earth. And in earth, he inhabited it with people. And I don't know whether there are 8, 9, 10 billion people on this planet. And in the midst of all, that, all them people on this planet, in the midst of this little speck in the galaxies, God looked down at you and loved you and had mercy on you and pity on you. And with him keeping all that going, when you call him, he listens. And he answers you. So the next time you get to thinking about, you get to think about that great big God. And he cares even for you. That might help you to realize who but God could do something like that. And he loves you. And he cares. He says, cast all your cares on him. For he careth for you. Tonight you might have come in low. Don't leave that way. Why don't you come and cast it on this great big God who's rich in mercy and full of grace and he loves you and he desires the best for you and he desires fellowship with you why don't you let him come in and sup with you tonight and leave out different than you came in let this who but God become but God and change your life even I say preacher I'm saved yeah well get revived and leave out here different than you came in let's have a song of invitation brother Clint you and brother Daniel come let's all stand God spoke to your heart the altars are open why don't you come do business with the Lord tonight nothing else just tell him thank you or tell him you love him some are coming they're picking out a song let's have a word of prayer Father we bless you Lord, I don't understand or can't even begin to understand your vastness or your greatness or even really, Lord, why you care about us. But I'm so glad you do. And I'm so glad that you're always there. Paul said, all men forsook me, nevertheless the Lord stood by me. Lord, I remember when he was in that terrible storm. He told them men to be of good cheer because the an angel of the Lord was with him. Lord, we're thankful you even speak to us in the midst of our storms. Now, God, I don't know anybody's heart here tonight, but Lord, you know everybody's heart. So God, speak to hearts. Help folks do business with the Lord. Certainly, God, if somebody's not saved, help them get saved. But save folks. Lord, I pray you'd help them. Put a hedge about them. The sorry no good devil's pulling out all the stops because he knows his time is short. So encourage and help your people. Well, thank you for it, for it's in Jesus' wonderful name we do pray. Amen. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.